Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter at Second Swing. And today we're continuing our series, so to speak, of uh, branded driver tests. Uh, we've done TaylorMade, we've done Callaway. Now we're on to Titleist, going back all the way to the 910 series and then into the uh, most recent series of the TS drivers. So uh, this will be an interesting test. We had a lot of demand for this one in, in some of the comments in our recent videos. I wanted to get this one out there. Titleist has always been uh, one of the premier manufacturers in golf. Uh, I guess maybe headlined by the golf balls, but certainly their golf clubs are really, really solid too. Yeah, the golf clubs are really solid. So we will test the 910, the 913, 915, 917, all D3 models. Then we're going to also do the TS3 and the 9.5 degree as well. We'll hit like five shots with each one and we'll kind of compare all the differences. We're all got the, in the A1 setting, so it's just the standard mm -hmm. loft, 9.5 9 degrees of loft on the club. Yep, and then now moving into some the more detailed specs, shaft, um, again, like you mentioned, the loft and lie is all gonna be the same. So what's the shaft we're working with here, and um, how's that gonna play? So I've got the graphite design Tor AD BB6X. I've actually played this shaft for a few years myself. I actually did just switch to the XC this year, but it's a very, very similar profile. They basically weigh the same, about 65, 66 grams, and very similar with regards to torque. So very similar to what I'm playing right now. And lastly, what were you going to expect out of this test? You know, we're testing roughly 10 years of technology here from Titleist. Um, what are you going to expect to see in the differences between all five models here? I think the important thing to focus on when we're looking at this is going to be kind of forgiveness and spin. One thing that I've noticed over time with the Titleist drivers is I've just noticed they do fly very straight, which is good, but I've noticed the spin rate being just a little bit higher versus maybe some of their other competitors. Um, the TS line, TS2 and TS3 drivers, I have noticed that they've caught up with the competitors with regards to ball speed and spin. So it'll be interesting to test to see what the spin rate on this TS3 mm -hmm. versus all the other four models compare. Yeah, I mean, and one thing too to note is like spin isn't always bad, you know, like uh, the spin can be a good thing, but it depends on where you're at with your game. Uh, and I know where you're at with yours in terms of what numbers you like for spin. So it'll be interesting to see how these drivers test up, what the spin numbers look like compared to what we've seen in some of these past driver uh, videos. Yeah, I'm excited. Titus has had some great clubs out for the last 10 years and we've got some adjustable models that we can test. Thomas, you have the 910D3. Uh, this would be a fun test here. Titleist has, you know, obviously been tremendous in all their golf products. Yeah, the drivers always had a really nice pear-shaped look to them. They're always kind of pretty look to look, good look down at that classic kind of black look to mm -hmm. them. So, good looking clubs. Yeah, yep. let's see what we got, huh? Sounds good. Pretty good as well. Yeah. And to the net as well. It's playing a little faster at that one. Pretty darn good start to this test for the 910 D3. So this is essentially 10 years old, this club. Uh, but these numbers are pretty impressive. I mean, that dispersion for one, you know, you had a couple, I think, barely left of center and then a couple that were barely right. That dispersion is, is pretty darn good. And then looking at your average numbers here, uh, the spin rate, 25.83, so probably a little bit higher than maybe you're used to. Yep. That's still a pretty darn good number. Carrying it on average, 282.8, the total distance of 304.1 on average. I think maybe one or two is a little bit spinny, which maybe dropped those carry and total numbers a little bit, but that's a pretty solid performance from a club that's you know almost a decade old. Yeah, that's kind of the takeaway. I had a couple there where my miss hits has just spun just a little bit more. Yeah. And they weren't even maybe so much miss hits. They just spun a little bit more when three of them maybe stayed a little bit lower, but nothing crazy low with regards to spin. And essentially it was about 25, 2600 with mm -hmm. a couple over 3000. But right. pretty good numbers. I mean, I hit it straight. I, I hit the fairway every single time on those right. five swings. So I was pretty happy with that. Right. And that, I mean, that smash factor is 148. So your, your average club speed is 110.3, ball speed 163.7. So 148 smash factor on a club that's you know, several years old. That's a pretty darn good start here for Titleist. Yeah, it was pretty efficient. Let's get to the 913 then. Okay.
Okay, Thomas, I mean, another solid performer here. Uh, that first drive you hit was maybe one of the straightest I've ever seen. Oh, that didn't, didn't curve at all. And then uh, moving forward, I, like, I think you commented on the high ball flight. Uh, so we can kind of look at the numbers here on, on that. And I know the spin did drop. Uh, actually, it did not drop. It actually was very, very similar. It's 2597 to yep. 2583. So that's I pretty much the same thing. And then uh, the height, we'll look at that here as well. Your height was a little bit higher with the D3. Uh, average of 120 and then 114 with the 910. So uh, I know one of the things you've touched on just in, in between shots and whatnot is that uh, maybe the missets are spinning just a little bit more with an older club than some of the modern ones now. That's kind of what I'm what I'm seeing. This one actually stayed pretty pretty consistent, and I think it was the highest was about 3,000. The lowest is maybe 2,300. Yeah. So it's pretty consistent. Um, still kind of slightly on the higher side of what I would like if I'm trying to get the ball to go a little bit further. Can probably maximize by newer technology to get a little more distance by getting that spin rate down. Yeah without even adjusting the loft and see kind of see what happened. Uh, in a fitting, we would focus on the loft of the club head, make sure we get that correct to make sure we get the optimal flight for the player and the optimal spin. Mm -hmm. But right now we're just testing 9.5 across the board. Right, and I want to ask you about the look and feel. Uh, they look similar just from my vantage point. They look like they are, you know, they both got that black, uh, kind of glossy finish on the crown. Yep. That same kind of uh, uh, alignment aid there on the crown as well. Look and feel pretty similar? Yeah, 910 uh, D3 and 913 D3, honestly, they look almost identical looking mm -hmm. down at. I don't know if this is a word, but it's kind of like a clank coming off the club face. It kind of feels like it's, it's not loud, but it's not soft. It's just kind of like a, a thud that's okay. kind of just going, I guess. So you can definitely yeah. feel it in can your feel hands. It. Yeah, I can There's feel it. There's a vibration hands. there. Yeah, can definitely feel the vibration. Okay, yeah. interesting. Well, okay. let's move on to 915 then. Sounds good. Five shots with the 9.15 D3. Uh, looking at the dispersion here, just quick look at it. The circle's a little bit shorter um, down the fairway, not quite as long as the previous two models. Um, now we'll quick take a look at the sort of the numbers to maybe see why that is. Uh, spin, a little bit higher increase, about 200 or so RPM. Uh, the carry distance kind of stayed up there over 280 at 281.4 total distance at 300.8 so I mean your efficiency also dropped ever so slightly from 148 to 147 okay so uh, kind of seeing sort of the same thing where those misses maybe still penalized with more spin kind of thus decreasing that total distance you can get because um, I, I know these spin numbers based on other driver tests um, and watching you hit drivers and testing more of the modern equipment from all brands that that number usually is lower for you yeah, I think the third shot that I hit, I think it spun like 3,200 RPMs. That yeah. one, yeah, I definitely miss hit a little bit, but I will kind of say this with newer technology, what I've noticed with miss hits, the spin has stayed down. Yeah. So I lost distance because of that. Now, the good news is it's not like a crazy, crazy low spin where it's hard for me to control. I think my dispersion with those three drivers was pretty solid. I think I mm -hmm. basically hit the fairway at least four or five times out of five every single time. So. Right. They were straight, so that's that's the good news. So very very straight driver for sure. Just spinning a little bit more for the first three models. What I kind of right. noticed. Yeah, I mean your those golf balls are all very close to each other out there. You know the, the you're you're right about that dispersion. Yeah. Now, look and feel. You know we talked about nine ten and nine thirteen being very similar. I noticed uh, that the sound seemed a little bit louder, a little bit more explosive in terms of the acoustics. Uh, what did you think about the feel of that? Exactly, it was loud. It was the first couple I just noticed the loud, loudness straight off the club face. Uh, look, looking down at it, it does look like a slightly larger profile okay. looking down at it than the other two models as well. I don't know, I'd have to take a look at the CC size and see yeah. if there's any changes from the 910, 913 to 915. But it does look like it's a little bit larger, looks like the, I guess it's a little more sized back towards the back of the club mm -hmm. a little bit, which could be part of the reason why it's getting up in the air there as sure. well. Yeah, you're right about but, that. Yep. Now let's get to the uh, 917. Okay.
Okay, Thomas, the 917D3. Now, I'm pretty sure, you know, in 2019 even, and perhaps still in 2020, a lot of the Titleist tour staffers are still using the 917 family. I know uh, Patrick Cantley won the Memorial last year playing a 917 driver. So, and for all I know, he could still be playing one. So this is now getting to that point where still, I guess, could be qualified as modern technology based on what the tour pros are playing. Uh, what did you think? Just we'll talk about the look and feel right away. How did that compare to the previous three that you tested? So look right off the bat, you can notice a difference in the color. So all the rest of them were black, black, black crown. This one's got kind of like that gray looking okay. crown on it there as well. Um, it is once again, kind of looks kind of like the 915, slightly larger profile mm -hmm. than the other two models. Feel wise, it wasn't as loud as the 915. Yeah. I think the 915 was definitely the exception. That thing sounded so much louder than the others as well. Yeah. Yep. Now look at the numbers here. Your club speed did jump up like a mile an hour, maybe two miles an hour um, with this club. So that did you know, improve the ball speed there as well. Uh, spin rate dropped a little bit. Yep. So you got 2445 on average for this one. And that could have been partly due to, I think a few of those maybe turned over a little bit more than the first three models so uh, but carry distance at 284.1 which is kind of right in the middle so far total distance at 307.7 is the farthest okay. uh, just barely over the 913 d3 again that might be partly due to the lower spin and maybe turning it over just a tad there as well so uh, I mean again another strong performance uh, from the from the 917 d3 there yeah I did notice that the spin rate there was maybe two or three shots with this one the spin rate did stay a little bit lower than the other ones that was spinning at 25 yeah. to 2800 this one actually had one or two that were maybe close to 22 2300 rpms yeah yeah for sure well let's get to mo the latest one from title is here TS3 sounds good Well, Thomas, that was five with the TS3. First look and feel of their newest kind of driver model, the TS line, the TS3 there. How did that compare to uh, the previous four that you looked at and tested? It honestly does look a little different than the other four models. Um, it's maybe not quite as pear shaped, I guess. Uh, from what I notice is the toe just looks kind of a little bit sharper around, around the okay. edge. It's like kind of like some square lines as opposed to more of a kind of a pear shape look on the toe of there. But otherwise, I mean, it does look like your classic tightless driver, just maybe a little bit more square looking down, mm -hmm. looking down at. Back nice. to the black model, one thing I do notice is the uh, alignment arrow flip flop. So flip flop from the 917 oh, yeah. to here. I believe it flip flopped the 915 as well from the 913. Could be wrong, but I remember seeing it, it looked different looking down at there too. So the little. Oh, sure. Pyramid or triangle that was on there, um, kind yeah. of flip flop the alignment aid piece. Interesting. interesting, huh? Yep, it well, felt solid. It definitely felt solid. It definitely felt like the bull was not spinning as much. And you're correct about yep. that. The spin on average was 2097. 2097, which so. is right around. I know where you really like to be, kind of that low 2000s range. Yep. Uh, and not surprisingly, that lower spin generated your highest carry distance at 288 and the t highest total distance at 316.6. Okay. So, and now part of that too, you did swing a little harder, um, or at least with faster speed with the TS3 uh, than the previous models. So that helped quite a bit, but the ball speed also was highest, 167.4. So okay. the numbers here are, you know, I think you know we thought a little bit maybe that the modern driver would have maybe the lowest spin and, and that would help it produce the, the best distance for you. And it seems like, uh, at least the TS3 here, that's correct. Yeah, that's exactly what I was would have predicted kind of right off the bat is TS3 is probably going to spin a little less than the other four models. The only thing I did have find challenging is, because the bull was going a little further, is my dispersion seemed like it was a little bit larger with this one. I feel like I had one a little more left and one a little more to the, to the right. Otherwise, you know, the higher spinning models did fly a little bit straighter. So there's definitely mm -hmm. pros and cons to spin yeah. when it comes to drivers. Um, we don't want to have a club that spins too little otherwise it is harder to control. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to see too much under 2000 because I feel like then I would have a harder time to be able to control right. it there too. But definitely from what I've noticed in a lot of fittings over the last couple of years, TS line, I 
usually notice about two to 300 RPMs less spin, a little more ball speed with the TS drivers versus say the 917. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, I'll let you have a look at the dispersion here and all the numbers and then kind of give more fitter expertise uh, from you here. Sounds good. Okay, Thomas, you're looking at the data. Titleist driver test from you know, 910 series to the TS series now. What are the big takeaways from the test? So club speed was around about 110 to 114. The last two models, I was about 113, 114. So I had to swing a little bit fast with the last two models. I feel like I was pretty warmed up at the start, but it's kind of interesting that those last two I did kind yeah. of jump on a little bit more. Um, interesting, what I did find really interesting was the smash factor number. So the first two models that I did swing with today, so the 910 and the 913 D3s, the efficiency at 148 was the highest out of all the models. Hmm. But what also is kind of interesting is when I look, compare that to say the, the, the latest two models, the 917 D3 and the TS3, is my efficiency was actually the least with those. I didn't quite catch them in the center, but they went further or just as far. Yeah. So that's one thing I kind of talk about is, you know, a little bit more forgiveness with newer models, keeping that spin rate down a little bit more. Yeah. We we'll notice the spin with the last two models, 2400 with the 917 and about 2100 with yeah. the TS3. Even though I didn't quite catch them quite as solid, the spin stayed down. So I was able to get away with a couple of those kind of misses there too. Yeah. So that's one thing I kind of noticed was the older models, I did hit very well, but they didn't go quite as far right. essentially. Yeah, that's one thing that you know we've kind of been preaching a little bit on some of these videos is that the newer drivers are going to be, the, the, the benefits are gonna be most noticed when you do miss the center ever so slightly. That's when that performance increases from kind of outside the center of the club face. And I think you see it here with, you know, you maybe weren't hitting it quite as efficiently in the center, but the spin stayed down and that really helped the overall distance and the uh, performance of the club throughout the test. Yeah, so speaking on spin, I always, I always like, spin is my favorite word, I guess, when it comes to club <laughs> fitting. I always say spin is king. But spin also, also can help players out too. So I'm looking at my dispersion pattern right now and I find really interesting with the 915D3. If we take a look at the, uh, the purple circle here, you can see the purple circle of those five shots was the smallest circle. It actually had the highest spin at about 27, 2800 RPMs. So I was able to control it a little bit either with a little bit easier with a little more spin. We look at, for example, the, um, the brown circle, so the TS3 mm -hmm. was going further. Yes, it was definitely going further, but it was spinning the least and it was the largest dispersion pattern. So spin is great to pick up distance, but in the day we still still want to hit fairways as well. So yeah. there's, Pros and cons with both, that's why it's important to work with your fitter to figure mm -hmm. out, what am I gaining here? Am I gaining 20 yards or am I losing two or three fairways per round? Yeah. So it's important to talk about that as well because it's not always just about picking up 20 yards, it's about hitting fairways as well. Right, absolutely. Yep. That's always been a, a huge factor in any of the driver videos that we've done uh, is not only gaining that distance, you know, the movement now, so to speak, in golf is getting as much distance as you can. You can ask Bryson DeChambeau, he yep. will agree with me, but uh, keeping it in the fairway is definitely as important uh, as getting that distance and so it's a good point that you bring up there about that spin because sometimes that added spin can keep it a little bit more straight on that ball flight maybe not uh, as wayward left or right uh, so in this instance here the the lower spin of the TS3 uh, was kind of complemented by a little bit wider dispersion uh, maybe more uh, missed to the left when then uh, with the other models yeah um, if we also kind of like take a look at kind of numbers with the first four models, you'll notice that my total distance was about 301 to about 307 for mm -hmm. the first four kind of generations that we tested here. When we tested the TS3, we'll notice my total distance was 317. So I picked up anywhere from 16 to about 10, uh, 10 to 16 yards of distance mm -hmm. with the TS3 versus the other yeah. models there too, so, which is kind of interesting. Yes, I was swinging a little bit faster with my club speed. So I always like to say every kind of mile an hour of club speeds, maybe about two or three yards. Mm -hmm. So just for example, if I was swinging the uh, 910 with 110 mile an hour, so it was 114, the TS3 was still outperforming the, uh, the 910 even lower. Yeah. I imagine I was swinging 110 with the, sorry, 114 right. with the 910. So the newer model was going further. Right, and yeah. that does have a lot to do with the spin. Because if, you know, maybe you do hit the, ball uh, right in the center of the club face, you're hitting your drives, you know, 80, 85% of the time in the middle of the fairway, and you just want some extra distance. In that case, the TS3 here to lower that spin uh, would probably be the driver for you. 
Uh, if you are someone that maybe does miss the fairway quite a bit and you, you're more focused on hitting the fairway, hitting it accurately down the center, you know, maybe one of these older Titleist models could do the trick for you. Maybe that spin does need to stay up for you. So that's, again, to your point about fitting. It's all about what you need in your game to lower your score. So, Thomas, thank you for hitting the shots today, providing your fitter insight. Uh, the Titleist driver model test here was, uh, was a success, I think. We learned a lot. Yeah, we definitely learned a lot. It was uh, very exciting to test the older models with the newer models.